Alright, hello. I'm going to show you how I do a hand assembly of a prototype. So, uh, this is the board here, and it's the it has a BGA device, so this is one of my first attempts. I already used one of these boards and soldered a um, similar BGA part down just to confirm the workflow would work okay. So, uh, the first thing I've done is I've taped these spare boards around it, and I'll use that to um, hold the board steady for doing the solder paste application. Um, and before that, I make sure you have everything ready. So I have some various tweezers. Uh, I'll have a vacuum pick in place. So this is actually just made from a, a filter, a fish pump, sorry, fish air pump that's been reversed. There's instructions online how to do that. Um, and then a tube that has a hole in it to pick up various size parts. So you can use either sort of needle tips um, that I've made just from things I had around and some of the tips come from an, another manual pick and place uh, thing I had. So that's useful for helping to position stuff. Um, various parts, so you know, folders, resistors, uh, so four or two size, and then a number of uh, 603. This one's from Newark. They sell a nice big set of uh, resistors. And of course, if you have uh, various custom you know, parts from DigiKey and stuff all ready to go. So I don't want to have to, I want to get this done as quickly as possible once I paste the board. Um, so before we do that, I'll just clean off the board. So this is just isopropanol alcohol, and these are like lint-free. They, they call them clean room wipes, but DigiKey, you can get a huge pack of them for not very much, and they're very nice. So we'll clean the board off, get rid of any contamination. And that will just dry in a second here. You can just see it drying. All right, perfect. Um, next, we have our stencil. So this uh, particular stencil was cut from a PCB way I used. They recently started doing stencils, so I was giving them a try. Um, so all we're going to do now is manually align. I don't know if you'll be able to see if I zoom in here. Sort of manually align the stencil so you'll see uh, as I line up. Search for where the heck it's supposed to go. There we go. Sort of bring it over and you'll see all the uh, gold fall into place as it uh, becomes aligned with the, uh, the stencil so it's easier to see from directly overhead. And I'm actually just going to wipe the stencil down. I used this, as I said, for doing a test of just the PGA part. So I'll wipe that down before I completely use it. And also for my fingerprints, touching it around. So the most critical is to align this, uh, this BGA part here. And once it's aligned, I'm just going to use masking tape to tape it down. So this squeegee I bought from, uh, where did I get this from? Dirty PCB, so they're really good. Uh, they do cheap stencils and you know, cheap boards and stuff, so they're all very nice. Um, you can use, people use like uh, wallpaper scrapers too successfully it seems, so I don't know which is better in the end, but I've had good success with this. So the solder paste I'm using, I'm using the leaded solder paste in this example. Um, only for the BGA, I want to make really sure that it reflows uh, nicely. So I actually normally use lead free. And th this stuff is just bought from DigiKey. We go. So this is the, uh, as I said, the solder paste we're using. Um, I always squeeze a little bit right at the tip off to get it out of there. Um, and then just lay a bunch down. I don't know how this is supposed to work, but I just sort of squirt it all over. Making sure I get some in front of the important areas. It always seems like you have lots left, so I wouldn't worry too much. All 
Okay, that was probably good enough. And now we just take our squeegee and we'll apply firm pressure, go along in one continuous. Oh, let just make sure I have enough all along here. There we go. So hear me say, oh shit, there, the squeegee's just not wide enough for a few of the pads on the edge, so um, I'm just going to push it outward here and down here too. So that's not ideal, but these ones on the edge are all very, uh, not very important to be honest. They're quite large size devices, so it shouldn't matter. Get the excess off. All right, hopefully that didn't screw it up too much. Um, so you can see there's, you know, I was a little generous with application. Um, there's a ton left over. You probably could have just squirted it all in one spot. So you can see how much is left over here. All right. So Clean the edge of the stencil off. Get some more. Stuff. And I'll clean it all sort of properly afterwards. All right. Um, and at this point, we want to cap our solder paste and lift the stencil. So we want to do this as cleanly as possible. There we go. You can put this aside and uh, we'll clean it off in a minute here. Just put it some scrap paper. So this is a pasted board so you can see some of the paste um, over all the pads here. And we'll just slowly go and start placing components. So for actually placing them, um, what I'm going to do is I have my uh, Eagle source up here on the computer monitor and basically you can use the find ULP and this can find components of all the same value. So for example here it's highlighting um, 100 nanofarad capacitor, so you can see, you know, there, 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 there. So the, some of these are actually different footprint sizes, um, so you have to be a bit careful. But it makes it pretty quick and easy for doing all the hand assembly work here. All right, so here's where the uh, the what do I call it? vacuum uh, tool comes in. So let's start with placing um, smaller 402 size caps. So if I just pull, where are they here? If I just pull these 100 nanofarad capacitors out. Uh, so I'll use at least this many, so I just open up the thing completely. Uh, so this is just a little oh shit, tape strip, uh, and I just dump them all out. So, and if you want, you can either use tweezers for this, or in this case, I'm going to try using the vacuum tool. Uh, the 402 are sometimes a little small for the vacuum tool to work on, in that it just sucks them up. But basically, if you can see, um, it's on the edge of a needle here. And 
if I release my finger, it'll drop off from the end of the needle. Um, so it's it works quite well. It's very uh, simple method.
Alright, so now this should be more or less complete. Uh, there was a few parts missing uh, that I forgot to order, that is. So there's a handful I cleared the paste from. Um, you can see in particular, so the, the switching supply right there and a AVR chip there. So I'll have to order that and solder it on afterwards. But nothing too critical. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is place the shield enclosure over this PLL system. All right, so I've now transferred the board to this, um, this reflow oven. So I'm using this TS962A, uh, and it has a custom firmware on it. So if you boot it up here, there's the power button. Uh, so this is an open source firmware people made to improve the oven. Um, so we can carefully close it in there and I've also added a I just tape the, the drawer closed because it tends to open on itself a bit um, and we can look in through the oven front you can see the watch stuff reflow um, and I also have it you can see in the outside here there's a fume hood built around it so I'll pull that forward and the fume hood's built on a exhaust fan here, uh, and then in the output it has a uh, active charcoal filter, which is actually a car interior cabin filter. So I'll set this up and watch it reflow. All right, so now the uh, the exhaust is set up, and we have the the oven starting to warm up. So I'm just gently bringing it up to temperature, and then I'll run a profile, and you can watch the reflow hopefully. All right, so we're running the reflow profile now. Uh, it's quite noisy because you see the fan noise is all going past this thing. Let's see. The oven's just getting to about 220 now, so the solder will hopefully start to melt shortly. You should see some of the parts. You can see some of that happening on some of the discrete parts at the front there. Up about 230. Uh, you can see the same reflow of the uh, seven segment displays in the back. about 240 so it's almost peaking now you can see the seven segment displays twinkling as they reflow so there we peaked it's actually often I use this profile for lead free um, so it looks like the BGA is potentially reflowing now Any luck? And it's gonna start to drop off.
The oven beeps, indicating that it uh, temperatures drop down. The board's still quite warm, um, still at like 100 degrees C here. BGA looks like it's centered, so we'll look under the microscope. That guy looks okay. So here's the result after the reflow. Uh, so yeah, it looks quite good. The FPGA is nice and centered. Um, you can see, so you can look at the balls from the side on the, uh, under the microscope. Another thing I try to do is look, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but if you look through a light, you can sort of see, uh, try to check there's no shorts between balls that way. Um, and we can check, for example, the, the TQFP package there. We can look as normal the old microscope um, but you should be able to see so there's no shorts in between so that all worked out quite well so that's how I've done reflow um, on you know using some pretty simple uh, systems but it lets me achieve pretty high quality so there's a little short there with um, this guy I'll have to cut back the pick and place option for the shield um, and the only other thing I had that happened was my reflow temperature was too high for this uh, connector, so you can see the top started to melt. So that does happen sometimes when you're uh, using the the reflow oven, uh, especially with it. You know the temperature is not very highly controlled. Um, you could probably either get a different part or try a uh, a lower temperature, but I didn't want to risk that with the BGA. Um, so we, that will still work, actually. The cable fits in. It just looks a little messy at the top, as you can see. There we go. So all I've got to do now is um, there's some on the back side, so I can do the same sort of stencil thing. I'll have it held off a little um, to get the back side stenciled. And I won't run the whole back side for a reflow oven. I'll just use a, a hot air gun because there's not many parts here. But that's kind of it.